Welcome to Storytime with Teacher Matthew. Today's book is Harold Circus by Crockett Johnson. Harold Circus. On uh, one moonlit evening, mainly to prove to himself that he could do it, Harold went for a walk on a tightrope. He made sure that the rope was drawn tight and straight so it wouldn't sway. He skipped lightly on it, finding it fun to be a tightrope walker high above the rest of the circus. He stayed up on the rope with the greatest of care until he lost his balance. It is so easy to fall off the tightrope. Harold fell, twisting and turning with his purple crown tight in his hands. By the stroke of luck, a comfortable looking curb appeared beneath him. And he landed on an elephant's trunk. Quite a trick, he thought, as he rewarded the elephant with a large peanut. Elephants are such tall animals. Harold was still a long way from the ground, so he swung down from the elephant's trunk to the neck of a smaller animal. It was a lovely circus horse, beautifully trained, and Harold easily put him into a brisk trot. Harold rode with no saddle in a splendid exhibition of circus riding. At the finish of the bareback act, he leapt perfectly from the horse. But to his embarrassment, he fell and turned a rather ridiculous somersault. Before anyone could laugh at his mishap, Harold pretended that he had been clowning. He quickly put on his clown's hat. And a clown smile. And he acted silly like a clown. Finally, he took off the hat and the smile and gave them back to the clown. The real clown was extremely funny. And Harold laughed and laughed at him. Harold told himself... Probably this was the best circus that he'd ever seen in his life. And like all circuses, it had a fat lady. She was really amazingly big. And of course, there was a very tall man. He was really, really tall. And next to him was a very small man. And there was another man, a lemonade man, and he had a great tank of lemonade. Harold stopped for a drink of it through a straw. It was quite refreshing. He left some money on the counter to pay for the drink, and he went on looking for the man who was shot out of the cannon. Harold wasn't sure where the man who was shot out of the cannon would look like, but in anyway, he wasn't there. So the cannon was nearly ready. A circus can't wait. There's only one thing to do. The cannon fit Harold perfectly. He got into it and he shot out of it. He went up fast. He sailed up to the top of the circus where the trapeze are and the flying rings. He reached out. He caught onto a flying ring. He swung far out on it. He let go doing a startling flip-flop in the air. And he dived straight down. He was sure the elephant would be there to catch him again. Once more, a reassuring curve appeared beneath him. But he landed surprisingly hard. This was no elephant's trunk. This was the tail of a lion. Somehow a lion had gotten loose in the circus. Before anyone could quite recognize the danger and become alarmed, Harold was at work getting the lion into a cage. He got into the cage himself with nothing but the lion tamer's chair. Then, like the bravest of lion tamers, he faced the lion with no thought of fear. He put his head right in the lion's mouth. After he took his head out of the lion's mouth, it occurred to him that lions have sharp teeth, and suddenly he became a bit frightened at how brave he had been. But his own feelings didn't matter. 
Carol told himself as he left the lion's cage. The important thing at the circus is to make the audience happy. Carol saw that everyone in the audience wore a delighted smile. Naturally, making so many people happy made Harold happy. And he smiled too as he very modestly, he bowed. Today I want to know what part of the circus did you like? Let me know.